So as we look around, you'll notice the car sits very low to the ground. And that's for aerodynamics. It's a very aerodynamic styled car. Now you'll notice right now we're plugged in. Our EV plug is here. A very standard plug. We're actually using a level two charger. This is a Sun Country charger. And for those of you that do a little bit of traveling, what you'll find neat, and we did this because as I mentioned, I have an, an RV background. We're actually plugged into a 50 amp plug. This charger is set up to use a 50 amp RV plug. So when I've traveled with motorhomes in the past, I'll take the charger with me to a campground and I'm able to charge the car using a level two, which charges this car in about four to four and a half hours. Uh, you're gonna notice indicator lights here on the mirror and it's a very aerodynamically set up mirror to let air pass right around. We have, of course, your keyless entry so you can hit the button to open. All right, so when you look at the Volt inside, um, this one having all the options has the leather seats, they're fully heated seats, and that's very important in an EV because that heated seat is more efficient at helping keep you warm in the colder weather. Now you're not gonna get fancy seats like power seats, etc. These are manual. They slide forward and back. They go up and down. Uh, no power seats because GM looked at it and said, one, power seats use more electricity. Two, they weigh more. Everything about this car is based on aerodynamics and weight. Less weight means better EV range. So let's hop inside and take a look at the car a little closer. So you'll notice really nice finishing touches um, with the two colors in the door. This is nice smooth finish. You look right around, there's a lot of attention to detail in how the car is finished. The center stack was available in two colors. We went with the white, there was a gray involved uh, as well. And you'll notice two digital screens. As soon as you come in, the car greets you and then you kind of go from there. Our steering wheel has our cruise control on this side, as well as being able to activate the lane departure warning and the forward collision alert. On this side of the wheel, we have our phone controls, our muting for our stereo, and then we have a selector button here so we can scroll through a, a various functions. And then of course, our volume for our entertainment center. Now, speaking of entertainment, when you went with the full package, you did get a Bose theater system that uses 50% of the power that you normally would use. Uh, I'm gonna turn the car on, and because it's an EV, it's very silent, and I'm gonna turn down the volume. So you'll notice it's been set, which is an option, to actually give us sounds so that the car will, you hear it turning on and turning off. I'm gonna mute the radio there. You'll notice in our screen up front, and I'll zoom in a little more so you can see that better. It says charge cord connected. We're still plugged in. We are fully charged, um, but it is warning us that our charge cord is connected so that we don't drive away. And in actual fact, if you notice, I'm, I try, I have my foot on the brake and I'm trying to engage it in into reverse and then drive, and the car's locked me out because the charge cord is connected. It's not going to allow us, even though it's warning us, it's not going to allow us to drive away. You'll notice on the left hand side, it's telling me that I have EV range of 44 kilometers. Right now I have about a quarter of a tank of fuel and it's telling me I can go 140 kilometers on that quarter tank. Now this tank is only 35 liters. That would be eight gallons approximately for our US cousins. 
Uh, you'll notice, as I mentioned, it's a very smart car. You'll see the two little passengers and the seats. Uh, they are just above the speed uh, to the left. That will actually tell us if our passengers in the back are buckled. The minute you sit down, it's going to tell you there's people there and whether they're buckled or not. Um, then, of course, we have our direction. We're currently pointing northwest. Our cruise control's on. And then on the uh, right-hand side, you're going to see that range that goes from brake to accelerator with the little circle. That circle will move up or down uh, based on how fast you're accelerating or how much you're braking. GM has built this in because the ideal is if you can keep that circle running as close to the center as possible, and if you keep it in the center, then you're driving super efficiently. If it's dipping too much to the brake, you're actually using more physical braking than regen, and you're losing some of your regen. And if you're hitting and that circle is going up to the accelerate, you're actually using your electricity faster because you're accelerating faster. So if you can accelerate and brake and keep it as close to that center, you'll get maximum, maximum range. Now our center screen will allow us to change between navigation, our forward collision alert. Um, this screen is the one, whoops, is the one I use most. On the right hand side will tell me how much electricity I'm using or regenning, and on, or sorry, the left, and on the right, is actually when our generator kicks in and it will tell me how much and how fast it's running rather than showing RPMs. There is a tutorial and information there and then we have our metric versus US ratings, vehicle messages, so you know it's telling me charge cord is connected. It'll tell me other items as well. Then what we can do is go to, I'm just gonna go, whoops, go here, our tire pressure monitors, our engine oil life, 32% remaining. What's nice with this car is GM's actually rated it for two years on an oil change because it runs so little. And that generator, again, it's a smart car. If you're not using the gas and you're running on electricity to keep the gas from going stale at certain times, the generator will kick on to do maintenance and burn gas little by little so it doesn't go stale. Then you have two trip settings. So you notice the last number of trips, it's been pretty cold, but over the last 857 kilometers, I've used 23 liters of fuel, averaging 2.6 liters per 100 kilometers. And over almost 1,200 kilometers, again, 2.7. When we come to our main screen, this is where it gets really interesting because you'll be able to see here our lifetime is 2.7 liters per 100 kilometers, and that's over almost 115,000 kilometers. Now, if we switch it to US, you'll notice that we have averaged over our lifetime 88 miles per gallon. Um, currently, it's showing 250 plus miles per gallon because we're fully charged. So where you see the 250, that will actually tell you for this trip in particular, how much, uh, when you get into burning fuel, how much fuel you've burned. And you'll notice at the top, it tells me what I will end up traveling on battery versus fuel. And eventually it'll show how many kilowatt hours I've used and how many gallons or partial gallons of gas that have been used. Tells us our outside temperature and our time. We have a charging button here. We can actually go into level of charge. So it's set to default at eight amps. If you have a newer house, you can set it to 12 and on 110 or standard plug, it'll charge a little quicker. What's also nice on this screen, it tells you. Now we're full 
or just about full. We're actually using some electricity as we're sitting here. So if we were charging on a regular household plug at 645, it would be fully charged. It's telling us on 240 volts, it'd be at 6 p.m. It would charge and we're 546. Now it's saying that because as I've turned the car on, it's turned the climate controls on. It's starting to precondition the batteries as if it's getting the car for me ready to drive. So we're starting to use some battery power. So if we sat, if we turn the car off, sat here, it'll charge it back up. And then this is a neat screen, our power flow screen. So it shows us our batteries, how much power we have in our batteries, shows our generator, and what'll happen is it will run and show you whether you're running on generator and it'll have arrows going to the wheels while you're driving on battery arrow will go from the batteries to the wheels and then if you're actually driving and some of the power from the generator is recharging the battery because you're generating more power than the drive wheels run you'll actually see arrows from the generator going to the wheels and back to the batteries our drive modes are selected right down here and then the leaf is actually what we're looking at it brings up our main information screen there's our heated seats now what's really nice about this volt and and it's very different people say different things it's all touch sensitive I like the touch sensitivity because it's a gentle touch, very easy to use. Some Volt drivers say they like more the button feel of a traditional car, which is funny. That was some reactions when the car was new. People saying they like the buttons in the Gen 2, the second generation Volt. What happened was GM put in more of those touch buttons and as EVs are being evolved, we're seeing more and more touch buttons and touch screens. So GM was well ahead of its day. Um, we do have good storage space. You don't see it here, but there's a glove, a traditional glove box there. There's nice compartments in the doors. There's even an area back here behind the shifter and the shifter simply, I don't think you can see, there we go, on the actual uh, console here you have your park reverse neutral drive and low Low again is for more regenerating up front because this is a fully loaded car this is our front parking sensors we do have backup camera and sensors as well as we have our traction control here and then of course on star and our garage door opener controls plus your little readout here that tells you right now there's no passenger in the passenger seat but it will tell you if they're there and then if they're bu buckled up or not buckled up a very quiet car everything in this car when they built it was either double welded and or special um, adhesion materials because GM found as they developed the car because it's so quiet when it drives the typical creaks and rattles you hear in a gas uh, that you don't hear in a gas car because of road noise and engine noise and exhaust noise you don't have that in an EV so it had to be much structurally firmer as well as um, quieting it down so that you wouldn't hear it when you drive. Now we do have a great little storage area here. There's also a 12 volt plug in there. And then we have our cup holders and in our armrest, we do have a USB plug in. This has the MyLink on it and that was set up for um, uh, iPods. So there's no Android Auto or Apple CarPlay on this car, but you do have your Bluetooth, you have USB for charging and or iPod playing, and there's a 12 volt in here as well, plus a 12 volt in the back. Uh, when we turn off the car, I'm gonna go silent so you can hear. You're gonna hear that little swoosh. It tells you your information about your trip before you get out of the car. Um, we do have 
our gas release button down here. Now that button actually depressurizes your gas tank because it does actually pressurize your gas tank, this car, helping it run on a smaller tank and be more fuel efficient. Let's take a look at the back. Now the Gen 1 volts were four seaters. So you'll see I have this seat currently flipped up. There is a console that goes in the center. Right now it's on the floor. I've taken it out to show you so that if you were flipping your seats down, which I'll show you in a, in a moment from the back, you can actually put larger loads all the way through so it's not hitting or damaging your armrest. And then the armrest just pops in. There's two cup holders there. Now in the Gen 1 volts, they did that because our battery bank is actually here and then goes as a T underneath the seats. Now, the car is a hatchback, so when you open that, you'll notice a nice large opening, and it's very, very deep. And you, when you flip down your seats, you'll notice how much storage space you get. So really good storage with your seat up, hence why I left one up, one down for this video, giving you lots of storage space. And I've been able to get, you know, two boxes of eight and a half by 11 uh, printer paper back here, plus another, you know, four jugs of 15 liters, which would be what, about four gallon water bottles for a cooler without putting the seats down. Uh, you do have some storage compartments left and right. There's also a privacy I'll call it a privacy curtain. Uh, they don't use rollouts. It's just a fabric privacy curtain, again, for weight. And then underneath here, we actually lift up. Sorry, my WeatherTech mat is catching one of the guides. You'll notice there's our 110 charger, which just plugs into a household plug, so it stores down below. It's nice and neat and easy to get to, so you always have it on you. And then you'll notice no spare tire. Again, weight saving. We want to keep the weight as low as possible, so GM provides you with a pump with sealant in it so that if you do happen to catch a nail or a small puncture, you can pump the sealant into the tire inflate the tire and then make it to a spot where you can get proper service and then our 12 volt battery for starting the car running your audio equipment etc is back here and if you needed to boost it you can see where you would boost it and then on this side there's a little bit of storage which is a nice neat little feature uh, design wise very different in the car aerodynamic spoiler to get the air over. This area here is actually see-through glass from the front, so not only, not only do you have your backup camera, but when you look through, you can see through that, ga uh, that glass for parking. We have our rear sensors, and then our backup light, which is a little unique, is here in the center, and it lights up down below, which is great for the camera because it gives the camera some great view when it's really dark outside. You'll notice the sharp edges on the sides of the car, that's for aerodynamics. Now, let's go around front. As I mentioned, I have the key in my pocket, so simple push to open. Let's pop the hood and take a look at underneath. Now, a little feature with, with the Volt is if the car was actually on, and sorry if you're not getting a great view, I'm opening the hood and putting the prop rod in with one hand. Um, if the car was on in EV mode, the minute we pop that hood, it would start the generator, which is this right here, would start the generator to tell you the car is on. It's a great little feature just for safety that it's saying, hey, I'm on, be careful if you start fooling around with anything underneath the hood, that you're not gonna get a surprise. Apologize, it's a little dirty. Um, 
in the winter don't get a lot of time to wash this off with the cold weather. This is our Voltec system right over here. You can see the wires coming out and that's for the EV side. Now, interesting little fact. Up front there are little louvers that open and close for aerodynamics when the car doesn't need to be cooled, opening when it needs to be open to get airflow in to help cool that generator, but a great little feature that a number of people don't know about is you're going to notice there's a coolant tank, number one, coolant tank, number two, coolant tank, number three. Now, each of these coolant tanks serves a different purpose. One of them is the coolant tank for the electric motors. One of them is the coolant tank for the battery. And the third is the coolant tank for the generator. So each of these systems has its own cooling tank that is cooling or heating those specific items. So in cold weather, it's going to use this coolant, help keep the batteries warm, and you can do that by preconditioning the car when it's plugged in like it is now. You use your remote start, it will turn on and start to precondition the car. When it does that, it's warming the batteries as well as warming up the compartment, the passenger compartment. It also has automatic seats, which will turn on the seats and warm up the seats. For you, when you get in, it's already warm. For EV efficiency, the seats can be used in an automatic mode that it will, based on the heat of the seats, etc., adjust the heat seating, the he seat heating automatically. Or you can do that in manual mode. So great little feature, um, very fuel efficient as I mentioned, and you can go up to two years on an oil change according to GM. So that gives you a little idea underneath the hood at what it looks like versus some EVs would have a frunk because they don't have that generator there. Um, I wish we would see more of this type of setup in the EV market today, giving customers the EV side that they like, but also the extended range by burning a little bit of fuel for those areas where you can't find chargers or you get there and the chargers are all occupied and you're not able to charge. What do you do in that case? There's still some expansion of the EV network that needs to happen for EVs to really become mainstream. That's the general overall review of the Volt. I hope that it's helped answer some questions. If you're looking to get into your first EV and you're not looking to spend a ton of money to go spend $100,000 on an EV, a pre-owned Volt is a pretty great bargain these days. Uh, very reasonable in price, great fuel economy when you have to run that generator really good EV range, and you don't have to worry about having range anxiety. The car is very peppy, great to drive. Um, it's really great to drive and fun in the sense that I've had a two-seater sports car, and this Volt drives like that two-seater sports car. Uh, little Z4 that I had, this feels very much the same because very low center of gravity. The batteries add to that, makes it feel like the car's running on rails. And when you drive an EV, you're tr you should ideally be driving efficiently. And that's part of the challenge in driving an EV, is driving it super efficiently, where so many times I'm going down the highway and I'll see more modern EVs and people are just flying down the highway. So, yes, it's great to see that EVs have come to the, to the forefront where you can get, you know, zero to 60s at three seconds. Uh, you know, they're hitting high-end sports car and supercar 
kind of numbers. But what we have to remember, it's great to have these cars that'll accelerate like that, that will travel to high speeds. Not as high as a sports car, but you know, we'll get to 160, 170 kilometers an hour. But you gotta remember, if you're buying an EV because you want to be green, you want to be efficient, that means you should be driving efficiently. With something like a Volt, because there's a little less range, you'll actually find yourself every trip you go out, uh, many Volt owners have reported back that it becomes a game. In the sense that they try to get further range, further on that same battery charge. Can they do better than last time? better than the best distance that they've done. And you'll find yourself slowing down a bit, not going slow, slow, doing more the limit, driving more efficiently, uh, where sometimes I'll see Tesla drivers on the highway blow by me 20, 30 kilometers over the limit because they have that extra range in the battery. Well, didn't we want to go to EVs to be more green and more efficient? And I think that's going to be the challenge for manufacturers. Longer, bigger, longer ranges, bigger batteries, but that also means being able to use the batteries faster, putting bigger, more motors in, being able to use and have more power. All great and dandy. I love power, don't get me wrong but what is it that you're trying to achieve out of your car? Something to just think about and ponder. Uh, the Volt, as a final note, will do 100 miles per hour, 160 kilometers an hour is what they've set it to, so you're not restricted on any freeways. It's not super fast at launching. You're about seven, seven and a half seconds, zero to 60, but again, it's not how fast you're getting there. It's how efficiently and how much fun you're having while driving. Um, one final note, I guess I should mention, with the mountain mode, or when you're in hold mode, should you stomp on the throttle and you need a little extra oomph to go up a big hill or a quicker acceleration, GM has built a planetary gear that in a very small instance, it engages to give more power to the car. I won't get into the whole explanations, it's a little complicated, but it's there for highway driving when you've run out of EV power, you need a little extra umph, it will pull it from the generator. Um, hope I've answered some of your questions if you're new to the EV market. If you like the video, please click the like button. We'd love to have you as a subscriber to our channel. We're going to be doing more car reviews, both on new and pre-owned cars. We're going to bring you some RVing, um, sightseeing, and some great RVing videos itself and lifestyle videos, so check back soon. If you subscribe and you hit the bell button down below, you'll be notified as new videos are posted. So if you like the, the video, please click the like button. Also, put any comments below questions, comments, love to see them there, and I'll get back to you. This is Bruno from Arvine TV saying thank you for viewing our video on the 2015 Chevrolet Volt, which is our personal car. We hope to see you out on the road. Make sure you live life to the fullest. Take care.